Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of my complete set review of Kaladesh. Today we're going over all of the green cards and then we're going to have a really big episode for our sort of uh, finale, if you will, of the set review as I go over all the artifact cards, of which there are many, and the multicolor and the lands. However, we're talking about green cards, let's get started. First up is Appetite for the Unnatural. One green, two generic mana for a common instant that destroys target artifact or enchantment and you gain two life. Okay, it's an artifact block. It's going to be more important to kill artifacts, sometimes enchantments, than it is normally. So this thing is a lot more playable and limited than it kind of normally is. Um, and it's a very good option. It's not like it's sorcery speed. You can do it at the end of their turn, which is fine. You gain a couple life, but that's okay. Sometimes that matters. Usually, you know, because it's such an instant, it's great that you're able to, essentially, whenever they turn on vehicles, for example, you're able to destroy them, you know, immediately. So then they, they not only use their creatures to turn the vehicle on, now the vehicle's gone and you gain two life on top of it. High five. So this is a card I always love to run at least one in sealed because you usually have a target in an artifact block you're almost always going to have a target and multiples kind of depends on what you're facing if they're if they're super artifact heavy or if they have a major like incredible enchantment that's wrecking you i can absolutely bring in more from the sideboard but i usually have one in sealed not usually in draft but again an artifact block makes you play a little bit differently and i would certainly understand if you played one in draft as one of your spells seems seems good basically uh again because the block kind of dictates that normally i wouldn't say you kind of run these torps these sorts of uh you know naturalizes or disenchants uh in your draft decks but this is a block that can really call for it uh standard eh, you know standard is like if they need a disenchant effect they're probably going to choose the best one whatever is cheapest if this one is the cheapest and or this one has the best upside it's going to be this one so maybe but these are the types of cards that nobody gets really excited about for standard it's just that they're neat they're needed and they're necessary so i'm glad it exists that's about it our borak arborback stomper excuse me Arborback Stomper is a two green, three generic mana for a five, four uncommon beast with trample. And when it enters the battlefield, you gain five life. This card's sweet. Uh, it's pretty much all upside. You're going to want to run it in sealed 100%. Yeah, I could certainly see it at the top of an aggro curve uh, or even in a more controlling deck because having five power, gaining five life for five mana, that's that's good times. That's uh you know, that, that is a fantastically sort of rated creature on the scale. So I would be absolutely happy to play this all the time in sealed. I'd be happy to draft it earlier than not because I think it is uncommon for a reason. It has a great power to toughness or power and toughness to mana cost ratio, uh, particularly when you think about the ability. Not going anywhere near constructed, but it doesn't have to. Sometimes you got great uncommons, and this is a really sweet uncommon. Next up is Architect of the Untamed, a green and two generic mana for a 2-3 rare elf artificer druid. Whenever a land enters the battlefield you're under your control, you get an energy counter. You may pay eight energy counters, colon, to create a 6-6 colorless beast artifact creature token. This card is great. Now, clearly, you're going to need something to do with all of your energy counters, but even if it's just to get this activated, to just make 6-6s six for free, start it immediately. Seems fantastic. If there's a red green aggro list, this could potentially see constructed play. I wouldn't be, you know, completely shocked at it. You do have some, you know, sort of minor fetch lands in the format. Uh, but in terms of limited, this is always playable. This is easily first pickable to kind of drive your draft towards the energy archetype, as it were. Uh, this makes all of your other energy cards that much better because you know the instant you can play this, you could activate her to make a 6-6 six, six at the end of their turn. Remember, you should always wait. Uh, but regardless, this card is incredibly good and incredibly playable, and I like it a lot. Next up is Armorcraft Judge, a green and three generic mana for an uncommon 3-3 elf artificer. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card for each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. So again, this is a great payoff card. This allows you to go sort of the fabricate route, and there's plenty of cards that put plus one, plus one counters on creatures, including those that are in green. We'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, you know, so, so there, you have the ability to not only just fabricate, but to give counters. This guy is an awesome payoff. At the end of the day, at worst, it is a hill giant. It's a four mana three three. Okay, but obviously you want to get plenty of value out of it. If you're able to draw at least one card off this thing, it's pretty much worth it. If you're able to draw two, you've entered gravy territory. If you draw a three, you're in magical Christmas land. Uh, this card is incredibly playable as long as you have just almost any fabricate cards in your deck. You could justify this guy being fine as a four mana three three, but you really want a good payoff. The more fabricate cards you get, the better this card gets. Clearly, if you're drafting towards that sort of a sort of a green based archetype, you want to pick some that are higher on the fabricate scale than the energy scale, because it's it's just interesting to me to see how Architect of the Untamed is very much you want all the energies and Armorcraft Judges, you want all the fabricates. So 
that's fine. Super playable, good in limited, not good in constructed. Next card. A Tune with Aether is a one green common sorcery that you search your library for a basic land card, you reveal it, you put it into your hand, you shuffle your library, and you get two energy counters. So this is a mana fixer. This allows you to splash a color, for example, in Sealed, where that's usually more relevant because you're able to search for your bombs, you're able to splash for your bombs. If your bomb only needs one other color that you're sort of not really playing, this allows you to play this card to not only fix you if you're sort of off on your, your second you know, uh, your, your secondary color, if you will. Uh, but of course it goes and it fixes that third color if and when you need it. Of course it does also provide an energy counters, which gives it one more kind of step up as to playability. One more reason that it works, because you have a bunch of energy-based cards. This lets you play with those and be able to boost those up while also fixing your mana, which is very important. So in draft, probably not quite as good in a much faster format that relies on hitting, you know, certain speeds. Uh, or maybe in draft, if you're playing a, a multicolor deck, it could be a lot more playable. But in sealed, this thing is really, really good. Again, you want probably a little bit of energy to, to you know, you want something to do with those energy counters. You don't want this just to be one green find a land. Um, but as long as you have almost any enabler, and if you're splashing for a third color, this card is perfect. I wouldn't run a whole bunch, though. Don't go nuts with these. This is really like a one of max because this effect is great. It does what you want it to do. You don't really want two of these things. Next up is Blossoming Defense, a one green uncommon instant that target creature you control gains plus two plus two until end of turn and gains hexproof until end of turn. So it's a fantastic combat trick. This card is amazing in limited. It has played every single deck that you can put it in. It's awesome. There's nothing wrong with that. The, the question really is, is like, is this going to hit constructed? Maybe, certainly in the modern type infect decks, they want to look at this type of effect because given Hexproof is obviously very powerful, particularly in that format where things are so cheap and instants and, and the spells are so crazy high on the power level. So, uh, so we'll see, it's questionable. I like Blossoming Defense though. I like how it just blooms with awesome. It just blooms. Bristling Hydra is next. A two green, two generic mana for a rare 4-3 Hydra that when it enters the battlefield, you get three energy counters. And you may pay three energy counters, just so happens, to put a plus one, plus one counter on Bristling Hydra, and it gains hexproof until end of turn. So here you already start to see Armorcraft Judge kind of paying off. This card to me was built to move. This card was built to answer certain problems. This card was to say, and Again, I feel like there's a red-green energy archetype, a red-green aggro uh, energy, and this is a card that definitely wants to be in that four mana slot. This is what you want to play on turn four. You want to keep up those three energy counters. You want to have three energy counters basically always at the ready, if not more so. Remember, you can do multiple activations with this guy. If you've got six energy counters, then he becomes a six-five, and that's fantastic. So... You know, there's ways of making sure that not only are you protecting your creature, but you're also kind of boosting and pushing it forward. So this is clearly amazing in Limited. You want to draft this thing early. You want to play it in every single green deck you got. Even if it just uses its own energy and that's it, it's still worth it. This card is incredibly good and incredibly playable. Commencement of Festivities is next. A green and a generic mana for a common instant. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to players this turn. So note, it does affect your opponent. Sometimes that matters. Um, but most of the time, this is just going to be a fog. This is going to be a prevent all combat damage this turn. Thanks, GG. Uh, this is a great card to sideboard in when you're in an aggro versus aggro matchup. Or a matchup where they are just incredibly fast or using a, or using a lot of pumps early. So if your opponent basically runs you over in game one of sealed, I'm sideboarding this thing in because this is the type of card that kind of gets you that one extra turn, that one reprieve where you're able to come back the next turn or able to draw your removal spell or draw the mana to play your removal spell. That's where this card shines. And the same thing happens in draft. You know, usually if you're going the red green aggro route and you're playing against an aggro deck, what you can do as the aggro versus aggro matchup is you're able to play one of these. You're able to get that type of advantage when they swing in, when they swing all in or whatever, you're like, okay, fog and then alpha strike them to death. That's how it works. So that's how you want it to work. Uh, this is also interesting because you can't have too many of these effects in standard. If you get too many of these types of prevent damage effects and you have too many of the type of howling mind, draw extra card type of effects, you actually can sort of break a format with a really awkward fog deck. And we've gotten close a few times, um, but I don't think we've ever really, really gotten there. If you want to go look up a really interesting card, go check out Moments Peace. Moments Peace was one of the biggest aggro killers of all time because it had flashback. You'll check it out. It's, it's very, very powerful, and they do not print cards like that anymore because they like aggressive decks to actually win games of Magic. So, Cal Prowler is next. It is a two green, four generic mana, 6-6 six, six common worm. Six mana, 6-6. Six, six. 
Good old fashioned. Fine man. Don't play a lot of them. But I'm happy to play this in sealed. I, again, I really only want one of them. Uh, and I'm happy to play it in draft if I'm not going super aggro. Uh, this isn't the card that is necessarily great in the deck that wants to go one drop, two drop, three drop, four drop. Trick, trick, win. Um, you know, this is a deck where this is, it goes into a deck maybe like green, black, for example, that's a little slower. Um, or even green, blue, when you're trying to be a little bit more tricksy and be able to play, you know, really huge fatties, give them evasion, for example. Uh, you know, this this is a this is a fine magic card, but one that you must temper yourself on playing too many because oh my god, six mana, six six, it still gets chump blocked by an O one. It still gets chump blocked by a one one servo. Like you got to be aware that there are ways to stop this card, which means there's reasons to not go all in on multiple copies. It's bad and constructed. I don't know if I had to tell you that, but just to let you know it's real bad and constructed. Creepy Mold is next. A two green, two generic mana uncommon sorcery that destroys target artifact, enchantment, or land. Now, this card, compared to something like Appetite for the Unnatural, is way more playable. This card is incredibly playable. I want to play pretty much every copy I have because it basically always has a good target. You're going to mana screw them, you're going to destroy their best artifact, or you're going to mess up whatever enchantment they may or may not have. So whatever, it doesn't matter. Creepy Mold has targets. I like this card a lot. It is uncommon for a reason. Creepy Mold is very powerful. It's going to be that much more powerful in an artifact block. And because it can hit lands, that is the crucial difference because you always have a target. When you play a naturalized disenchant type effect, you may not always have something, but you will always have something with Creepy Mold. And sometimes that something will completely cripple them for the rest of the game. It may make standard i would not be surprised again because it's so incredibly versatile and it can hit lands at worst and it works in a world where enchantments and artifacts particularly artifacts are getting a lot better than they used to so this card has seen constructive play in the past i would not be surprised to see it in sideboards uh, but in limited i like this guy a lot in draft it's not quite as good because you're on a curve you can't really run too many fours that don't do something or aren't creatures or don't you know kill or affect their or affect certain things but regardless I like this card a lot. It's amazing and sealed. Play all the copies you have. It's great. Next up is Cultivator of Blades. Two green, three generic mana for a rare 1-1 one, one Elf Artificer. Fabricate 2 has Fabricate dubs. And whenever Cultivator of Blades attacks, you may have other attacking creatures get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is Cultivator of Blades power. Bomb rare, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a little expensive. Still a bomb rare. This is still a card that... You know, more or less, it, it pumps your entire team. It gives you the alpha strike. Now, it does not pump itself, so you need to be aware of that. However, it's a good thing that you're in the color that pumps other creatures or pumps your creatures as best as possible. Giving this creature any sort of pump lets you attack and give all your guys plus five plus five. That only takes plus two power to do all of that. So this card is incredibly sweet. If you have the ability to instead make him a one one and then make two one ones alongside of him, and then you're able to pump him up to a three or a four, you're doing just as well. And he basically brings his own army in a can. You want to have a little something to back it up, but this card is 100% playable, 100% pickable. I, you know, it's it's as close as you're kind of going to get to an overrun in this format because overrun's too good, but they'll give you cards like this to kind of make you work for it. And when it works, it works incredibly well. Uh, would not expect it in standard. It's just a little too fragile. There's just not enough power for the mana cost, stuff like that. Uh, but in limited, this guy is absolutely an all-star. Dubious Challenge is next. It is a green and three generic mana for a rare sorcery. You look at the top 10 cards of your library. You exile up to two creature cards from among them, and then you shuffle your library. Your opponent may choose one of the exiled cards and put it onto the battlefield under their control. You put the rest onto the battlefield under your control. This card is terrible. Um, I don't know if you knew that, but when you give your opponent the choice, pretty bad. When you give the opponent a choice of two creatures, they get the best creature. So... You don't know what creatures you're going to find, first of all, so you can't really stack it like, I'm getting this creature, they're getting that creature, so no matter what happens, I'm okay. They're always going to get the best creature. They have the choice in the matter. This card is unplayable. It's bad. Stay away. Run. No good. Next up is Durable Handicraft. A green and a generic mana for an uncommon enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay a generic mana. If you do, you put a plus one, plus one counter on that creature. One, one green and five generic mana colon, along with sacrificing it, you may put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. So what we have here is a terrific build around me common. You easily first pick this thing, and then all of a sudden you just you play cards such as the Armorcraft Judge that we talked about earlier that is able to get bonuses as a result of you having plus one, plus one counters on your creatures. So this basically says the rest of your creatures for the rest of the game get this sweet bonus, and then when you're able to like swing it all out, like, 
putting creature putting counters on all the creatures you control that's huge it gives you an unbelievable advantage in combat and gives you a real combat advantage a combat advantage with every creature that you play is just marginally better than it really should be basically you're paying an extra mana but it's getting that bonus and a lot of things have bonuses based on plus one plus one counters and so uh and so this card is fan freaking tastic i love to play this thing i don't know about multiples per se but i mean think about it if every creature costs two colorless more but came in with two plus one plus one counters i'm all right with that i'd be okay with that i'm feeling good about it this card is really good it's one of the great build around me uncommons and i like it a lot Elegant Edge Crafters is next. A two green four generic mana for an uncommon three four elf artificer. It cannot be blocked by creatures with power two or less, and it has fabricate of two. So essentially, a six mana five six or a six mana three four with two one ones. It still can't be blocked by powers with power two or less, and that is important and often matters because then their servo tokens can't block this guy. So yeah, you put six mana into this three four, but they just can't block it with their smaller dudes or the guys they played on the first couple turns. Uh, it is a six drop, however, it is a powerful one. I think that being able to have the option of a five six or a three four and two one ones is very good and limited, better in sealed than it is in draft. In draft, I think it's a little slow. It's good, but it's a six drop. So you gotta really weigh that against like, what is the power level of the cards that you're playing on turn six? You know, I don't think you would necessarily not play this if you, you know, if you had the choice of this and maybe uh, the six mana six six, for example. Um, I would rather play this because it gives me more options. It gives me more ability to create an army in and of itself or create a much larger creature to deal with uh, than I would play the six mana six six. And that's why I think this is uncommon. And that's the, that's the reason why this card gives you interesting choices in ways that the six mana six six is just like kind of a dumb dork basically. Not to mention the added ability to not be blocked by creatures with power two or less. So Fairground, and it's bad and constructed. You know that. Fairground's Trumpeter is next. A green and two generic mana for a 2-2 two, two uncommon elephant. At the beginning of each end step, if a plus one plus one counter was placed on a permanent under your control this turn, you put a plus one plus one counter on this guy. So clearly, Durable Handicraft and Fairground's Trumpeter, I'm not saying it, but you know what I'm talking about. You have your A's, you have your B's, and what a wonderful alphabet it is when they sit alongside of each other. So clearly this guy has the potential to kind of go nuts. There's definitely an underlying theme in green of plus one plus one counters, manipulating them, getting bonuses from them. That's awesome. So, you know, play this guy accordingly. I think this guy is super sweet. There's definitely there's reasons, reason he's uncommon. I'll play basically every copy I can get as long as I have a little something to do with plus one plus one counters. Uh, a plus one plus one counter can come from Fabricate. Remember that. So this card seems incredibly playable. It's one of those things that creatures, it's one of the creatures that your opponent is going to want to kill while a Fabricate trigger is on the stack, for example, or its abilities on the stack. Uh, because this feels like a guy that can get pretty out of hand based on what we've seen just so far from green. This guy is incredibly powerful powerful. Uh, so I like him in draft because you can draft around him. I like him in seal because it doesn't make a lot to be great. Uh, and otherwise he's a fine man at a three mana two two. Uh, don't foresee him in constructed by any means, but you know, good limited cards are good limited cards. Gira per guide is a two is a one green two generic mana three two uncommon elf scout for a green and two generic mana target creature you control can't be blocked by creatures you can, I'm sorry. A green and two generic mana, target creature you control can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less this turn. So this gives you some ability to protect himself, which is interesting. Ability to sink a bunch of mana so that you're able to more or less cut off a lot of blockers from your opponents. Uh, it sort of says that your opponents can't block with servos. That's more or less kind of what it says. They can't block with thopters, they can't block with servos, okay. Um, otherwise, a three mana three two is absolutely on the curve. Uh, again, uncommon for a reason because this guy in multiples I think is very powerful, um, and the ability to give the the ability to give not only himself that power but anybody else that power uh, can be used to your advantage. And otherwise, three power for three mana is good. Great and limited, bad constructed, but that's okay. Gear per guide is very playable. High Spire Artisan is a green and two generic mana for an O3 common elf artificer with reach and fabricate of one. So it's a basically weird spidery kind of guy. Uh, a three mana one four reach for all intents and purposes. Uh, and so as a result, it's a little underpowered. Um, don't really like this guy. If you're searching and reaching for the plus one plus one counter theme, if you're just dying for, for guys to put in the deck, 
you know, just like there's a reason that guy was uncommon, the reason this is common, and sometimes they're bad. I think this guy is a little on the low power level. I wouldn't play him unless I absolutely had to. If you just have that spot in the curve that's missing, if you just don't have any other three drops, like here's a guy that you can think about. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's pretty bad. Next up is Hunt the Weak, a card that has been printed many times. Have green and three generic mana for a common sorcery. You put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Then that creature fights target creature you don't control. They deal damage equal to their power to each other. So this card is green removal. It is very good. You play all of them. Yes, it's a little expensive, but it's almost always worth it. And it deals with creatures in the way that it deals with other, you know, other creatures in the way that green is best at, which is fighting, which is great. I love the fact that we have fighting. I lived in a world without fighting. Let me tell you, fighting is awesome. Fighting is great. It is sweet. This card is fantastic, mainly just because it kills a thing. So not, don't think of it much as a fighting card as it does, I'm going to kill a thing. I'm going to make my dude huge. It has a plus one, plus one counter theme built right in, which is awesome. And it can fight a guy to kill that thing dead. This card is super good in sealed. Not quite as good in draft, again, just because you're, you're very concerned about mana cost and using your mana the right ways. But a removal spell is a removal spell is a removal spell. And you pretty much should be playing all of those. Next up is Kujar Seed Sculptor, a green and a generic mana for a 1-2 common elf druid. When it enters the battlefield, you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control, including itself. So it could be a two mana, two, three, basically. It doesn't say another target creature. It could be itself. So uh, as a two mana, two, three, that's pretty awesome on the curve. I mean, at this point, and we'll get to it, we have a three mana, three, we have a two mana, three, two, and a two mana, two, three. And this guy has the ability to put a plus one plus one counter on something else, again, furthering the theme, or he put it in on himself, again, furthering the theme. Even if it's just on himself, it's still good. So this card is a lot cooler and more interesting, I think, than the High Spire Artisan was, um, and is a lot more playable, honestly. This is a two drop that I like a lot, because even in the late game, when you play it on turn nine, at least you're able to pump like one of your big flyers or one of your big monster, you know, one of your big trampling monsters. Uh, this card has a lot of flexibility. I like this card a lot. Kujar Seed Sculptor. Larger than life is next, a green and a generic mana for a common sorcery target creature gets plus four plus four and gains trample until end of turn. My god, this thing is huge. So, as a result, it is incredibly powerful. I like to play every copy I have of this card. This card is super good. Yeah, it's sorcery speed, but your guy is turning enormous and must be dealt with more than likely, or it will draw out that removal spell that they were going to use on you anyway. So, larger than life is definitely larger than life, and I want to play every copy I can get my hands on in limited. Don't see it happen in constructed, but two mana for plus four plus four and trample is nothing to sneeze at, to be honest. Uh, it is an incredibly powerful rate for the mana that you're putting into it. So I'm not going to say it's unplayable and constructed. I'm saying it's a little dubious, but it is 100% playable and limited. Play this thing in every draft, every sealed. It is very powerful. Next up is Long Tusk Cub, a green and a generic mana for a 2-2 uncommon cat. Whenever Long Tusk Cub deals combat damage to a player, you get two energy counters. You may pay two energy counters to put a plus one plus one counter on it. So it powers itself. It's an amazing card on the curve, particularly on the play. You can use other energy counters at instant speed to pump it as many times as you want for two energy counters a piece. This card is amazing. This card is super, super good. I expect this card to see standard play because it's pushed as hard as it is. Uh, it works within any type of energy archetype. Anything that gives you energy counters is able to work really well with Long Tusk Cub. If they don't block it, it gets bigger. If they don't block it again, it gets even larger and it gets really big, really fast. You can use that ability as many times as you want. This is a premier two drop in the format. Play every copy you can get your hands on. Long Tusk Cub is sweet. Nature's Way is next. A green and a generic mana for an uncommon sorcery. Target creature you control gains vigilance and trample until end of turn. It deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. That ain't fighting. That's dealing damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. This is amazing. This is as close to a green doom blade as you're going to see, and it is unbelievably powerful. It is certainly uncommon for a reason not unbelievably powerful. Let's not go nuts. It's super good. It's a piece of removal. You're going to kill a thing with it. So if you're in green, pick this thing early. Play it always. It's fantastically awesome. That's great. Now, constructed, these types of effects don't really ever reach constructed, but in limited, this guy is an all-star for sure. 
Nissa Vital Force is next. A two green, three generic mana, five loyalty planeswalker that is, of course, mythic. Her plus one is untapping target land you control until your next turn. It becomes a 5-5 five, five elemental creature with haste. It is still a land. Minus three, you return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. And minus six, you get an emblem with, with whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. A super crazy mega bomb in limited. This card is first pickable. This card draws you into green. This card is amazing. <sighs> One turn ultimate, ladies and gentlemen. This goes ultimate in one turn. Let's remember how powerful this card is. Excuse me. Because the power is definitely in. I play Nissa. I plus one make a 5-5. Five, five, say go. If you can't deal one damage to her, at least one damage, I'm going to be drawing a card for every land I play for the rest of the game. That's crazy good. And, of course, when you're feeling good about it, I can definitely see the people who make another 5-5, five, five, you know, another land 5-5 five, five until end of turn uh, after the first one goes away to make sure you get her to 7 counters so you can get the ultimate and then not have to, you know, kill Nyssa. But you're just being greedy if you're doing that, for real. Like, this is going to see standard play. I think this card is incredibly powerful. It is unbelievably sweet and, and limited. Like, it's a Planeswalker. If you haven't played with a Planeswalker and limited, oh, it's just, it's just... You will, you will love this card because it does all the right things. It has all the right power level. At worst, it regrows a permanent that you got killed earlier, that you had to give up, or that they answered in some way. So it's good. Pretty much no, no, no matter how you slice it, Nissa is an incredibly sweet magic card. I love Nissa Vital Force. Ornamental Courage is next. It's one green for a common instant that untaps target creature, and it gets plus one, plus three until end of turn. Card's kind of bad. I know it sounds like you're going to have this big sort of trick that comes out that's going to surprise your your opponent and they're going to get totally destroyed and blah, blah, blah. Only pumping one power isn't that incredible. Pumping three toughness is fine. Untapping a creature is not that good. It doesn't even give it something like reach, which would be at least be interesting and give it more opportunities to shine. I don't like this card. I would not play this card. It's just not good enough. Next up is Ovaya Pashiri. I hope I didn't mess that up. Sage Lifecrafter. A one green mana rare one two legendary human artificer. For a green and a two generic mana, you may tap to colon put a one one colorless servo artifact creature token into play. One green and four generic mana tap colon create a XX colorless construct artifact creature token where X is the number of creatures you control. So it's a little weird how it's worded because the five mana tap, make an XX token equal to the number of creatures you control. It makes it equal to the number of creatures that you control when you play the ability, not necessarily when it resolves. I think it's really, I think it's an awkward phrase. It's an awkward ability. I wish it hadn't been named that or hadn't been phrased that way because I think it's very confusing or has the potential to be very confusing, particularly to new players. Here's like, well, is X this or is X that? But it's in play, but is it not in play? Wait, it's on the stack? Well, what, you know, what happens if something happens to creatures that are on the stack? Um, so I think it provides a lot more questions maybe than the benefits that it has. But let's move past the weird wording and the weird effect. Card is a limited bomb, like absolutely huge bomb. Uh, it's clearly playable on turn one, and you want to start pumping out guys on turn three, and then turn six you're able to start making really scary dudes. Uh, this is a card that absolutely must be answered. Absolutely is playable in every single deck that can play it. I would, I would definitely not want to splash for this so much because it is one to eat your mana, uh, eat your green mana in particular. Um, but you know what? I wouldn't, I wouldn't call you crazy if this was one of your green splashes because you really, if you're only green spell is this and all you're using her for is to make servos and then make huge monsters you're still making servos and huge monsters every turn with your one green mana so this is a very powerful card it is an army in a can it must be answered it is always playable it is super sweet first pick bomb love it and sealed which it, where it's even better for god's sake uh don't know if it can reach constructed because you know power level constructed has to be pretty pretty high but uh but yeah this one this one definitely has a shot and in limited it is incredible Pima Outrider is next. Two green, two generic mana for a 3-3 common elf artificer with trample, and it has Fabricate of One. So it is a 4-4 four, four for four with trample at common. That's amazing. Now, if you if you use the Fabricate and you make it a 4-4, four, four, that's great. If you use Fabricate and you make it a uh, and you make it a 3-3 three, three and a 1-1, one, one, that's okay too. So this to me is literally what I want to be doing at turn four almost every single time. This card is really powerful. Uh, it does everything you want it to do, whether it makes a 4-4 four, four, or it makes two two creatures, you know, which sometimes matters. Um, it gives you that flexibility. And as a result, the power level in this guy in limited is very high. Uh, it's going nowhere in constructed, but that's okay. Uh, it's 
it's good, you know, sealed, limited, whatever. Uh, and, and those are kind of the creatures that are just the backbone of your green decks. So Pima Outrider is great. Riparian Tiger is next, a two green, three generic mana for a four, four common cat with trample. And when it enters the battlefield, you get two energy counters. And whenever it attacks, you may pay two energy counters. And if you do, it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. So if you are of the energy persuasion, if you will, if you have the ability to generate energy, particularly well, ideally on a semi-regular basis, if you have probably five to seven cards that do something with energy, it's good. Being able to power itself to a 6-6 six, six for at least one turn is very good, is very powerful, is on the curve, is playable. Uh, multiples, I think, can kind of get a little clunky, like, like any multiples of fives and sixes when you're in draft. But in sealed, this guy is fantastic. You're basically getting them at a cut rate. You definitely won't be able to create energy counters in some other fashion, but there's plenty of ways to do so in this set. Uh, and again, this is really interesting to me on the way that they did kind of sort of another five mana, six, six trampler, but we kind of got clever and cute with it because the energy counters allowed them to do that. So, you know, this is, this is a card with potential and limited. Uh, I like it more in sealed because I think that one is a little bit more of a grindy, slower format. Being able to make this a six, six is great. Um, Weirdly enough, I really kind of like cards like Long Tusk Cub better because those are cards that do permanent upgrades. This is a temporary upgrade that you had to pay for. So it's good when it's good. It's not that great when it's not that great. So you got to take it with a, you got to, you got to really measure this one. It's not amazing in multiples, in my opinion, uh, because it's just going to be chewing through all your energy counters. Uh, but as a one of, as a, as a threat, I definitely like it. I think this card is sweet. Riparian Tiger. Sage of Shyless Claim is next. A green and a generic mana for a 2-1 common elf druid. When it enters the battlefield, you get three energy counters. And that's what it does. And it's incredibly playable because of that. Uh, it's on the curve where you want it to be. Uh, it provides a lot of energy counters from for its mana cost. And it's probably pushed to the point where we're going to see this card in Constructed because it gives so many energy counters so early so quickly. Uh, I like it for that a lot. You don't need to have a lot of energy enabling things or energy uh, sort of cards that take advantage of energy. You don't need a ton of those in order to make this card playable because again, as two mana, two one, sometimes you need two drops and sometimes energy doesn't even matter. You just need a two mana, two one and this is a guy who's there. So don't forget that you need two drops, particularly in sealed. I know you got the ridiculous bombs at seven or eight mana or whatever it is, but sometimes a two mana, two one will kill you if you don't have something to block it. So not only does it give you the energy benefit for cards that are also in your deck it provides you right where you want to be on the curve in terms of power to mana ratio so could see constructed play maybe because of so much energy it's being in the right colors i think there's a red green aggro energy deck but in limited i think this card is incredibly playable it doesn't need a lot to make it good servant of the conduit is next a green and a generic mana for a 2-2 uncommon elf druid when it enters the battlefield you get two energy counters you may tap and pay an energy to add one mana of any color to your mana pool so this is another all-star two drop this card is always super playable not only does it fix your mana it does give you energy counters it is a bear at the end of the day which is a fine playable magic card in terms of stats so yeah, I like this card a lot. Uh, he helps you obviously splash things. If you have almost any other energy enablers, I would feel good about splashing for different colors. Now clearly you wanna have some sort of mana base that, that is able to take advantage of it. And you want things like not only this guy, but you know you obviously wanna play more basic lands of the third color and things like that. But this is a, this is a great way to not only shore up a third color if you're splashing. This is a great way to zoom into really big, powerful stuff because essentially it's a mana dork, but it's a mana dork that is metered and that's why it's really powerful. You get those two uses for free and then you have to pay for the rest, but there's plenty of ways to get them. It powers you from two mana essentially to four mana the next turn when you lay a land and you have him plus the three lands you got. So you can play a four mana spell you get in front of your opponent in terms of mana cost. Uh, helps you when you're on the draw, of course, for the same reason. Uh, this card is very, very good, very playable. I like it and constructed, maybe? it's probably not good enough but i do still think it's really cool the artwork is you know clearly amazing uh villain Nueve is just unbelievable uh constructed yeah i don't think so but limited oh yes please and thank you takedowns next a green and uh i'm sorry one green for a common sorcery that, that chooses one you take down deals four damage to a creature with flying or take down deals one damage to each creature with flying I don't know if the second one is going to matter as much because I don't think there's as many Thopter creators or Thopter sort of cards that 
there's not a ton of Thopter creating cards, let's put it that way. Um, however, being able to deal four damage to one target or one damage to all the targets make this, makes this a lot more playable, makes this a lot more main deckable than I think it otherwise would. However, I still feel comfortable leaving this on the sidelines. I would rather see them with all the Thopters or see them with that powerful flyer that I need to answer to bring this in versus having it sit in my hand and get destroyed by some ground pounder. Like, and they have a six mana six six and like you rip takedown, you're gonna be like, oh, oh. Like mistakes were made, you know what I'm saying? And nobody wants that. Uh, so it's I think it's a really good sideboard card. Again, as I made I mentioned in my popper video, I think this has popper potential, which I think would be really cool. Um, but regardless, you know, good sideboard cards are good sideboard cards, and takedown is exactly that. Next up is Thriving Rhino, a one green, two generic mana for a two, three common rhino. It enters the battlefield and gives you two energy counters. And whenever it attacks, you may pay two energy counters. And if you do, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So this card is yet another in the awesome energy all-star field when it comes to green cards. So being able to play Long Tusk Cub and next turn attack with Long Tusk Cub, get two energy counters, be able to play Thriving Rhino, then you have four energy counters. And so at that point, you have not only the ability to pump long, the Long Tusk Cub twice if you'd like, you have the ability to not only pump Long Tusk Cub, but also pump Thriving Rhino when you attack and you hit with Long Tusk Cub, then it gives you two more energy counters, which can make this guy instead of a 3-4, he's a 4-5. Like, they scale all in the right way. They work together in the ways that you want them to. Um, this card is super good and limited. It's better usually in the in draft decks because you're able to curve into it, not as, not as great and sealed. Um, but regardless, it kind of powers itself. And because it powers itself and it is ultimately a three mana, three, four, that is a very powerful magic card. So that in that regard, I like playing a lot in my green decks. I'd be happy to play this in sealed, happy to play this in draft. Uh, I think Thriving Rhino is excellent. Speaking of excellent, excellently excellent, amazingly excellent is Vergerous gear hulk mm. it's a two green three generic mana four four mythic artifact construct it has trample because why not and when it enters the battlefield you distribute four plus one plus one counters among any number of target creatures you control Woo boy this thing is a mega ultra bomb in limited a super crazy first pick me high five your buddy ultra bomb this card wins games all by itself whether it becomes an 8-8 trampler which it could be for five mana or it pumps your team which is most likely what's going to happen we already have cards that rely on plus one plus one counters giving bonuses but this is the cherry on top of the sunday this is the card that you want to be curving out to this is what you may be doing on turn five pumping four guys or pumping three guys and giving itself some counters like this card is very, very good. I would not be surprised to see it in Constructed. I think they've continued to push five mana 8-8s. Eight they've just continued. Like, look at Spectral Force. Spectral Force was really the first one. That was it. They were like, oh my god, is it too good? We're not sure. Spectral Force saw play, but it wasn't overpowering. And they, and they kind of sort of kept on. Uh, Wolfbeard Silverheart, for example. Uh, that one went completely nowhere because Thrag Tusk existed. So they keep trying to make this five mana green 8-8 eight eight thing happen. And they finally, I think, gave it a power, gave it an ability that really gets it there this card is just woo this card is super crazy good you're going to want it every single time constructed limited doesn't matter this card is good coming and going wow this gear hulk is easily one of the best ones wild wanderer is next a green and a three generic mana a green and three generic mana for a 3-2 common elf druid. When it enters the battlefield you may search your library for a basic land card put it on the battlefield tapped and then shuffle your library this card's great it's fantastic. I don't see it in Constructed because it's a little too slow and the stats aren't quite as good. But Limited, this card is amazing. Sealed, this card is even better because it's going and finding you your third color if you're splashing. It accelerates you into six mana because next turn you're going to lay a land, so on and so forth. Like, this card is brilliant. I want to run multiples of this card. This is what I want on my four drop in Sealed, no question, because the more mana you have, the more ability you have to play your big spells, which in a, in a slower format is where you want to be. Uh, even in Draft, I think it's good. Probably not quite as good. Good, but in sealed man this thing is amazing uh, don't really see it in constructed but that's okay in limited this card is fantastic next up is wildest dreams and I want to appreciate right now that wizard is naming cards after Taylor Swift songs yeah Taylor Swift naming magic cards ladies and gentlemen it's 2016 wildest dreams is up next a green XX rare sorcery that returns X cards from your graveyard to your hand and you exile wildest dreams and I would like to just take a moment to appreciate that Taylor Swift songs are now magic cards yeah that's awesome um, I'm, I'm looking forward to the shake it off sorcery you know what I mean it's gonna be it's gonna be sweet anyway there was a card in magic there was a card in 
uh, in Legends called Recall. Now, it had the exact same text this one does, but you had to discard X cards from your hand as a result or as an additional cost. They got rid of that because it was terrible. The card was bad and they reprinted it a few times. It kept being bad. They realized that regrowth type of effects that cost three or more mana, like Recollect, if you find out, if you look up that card, um, which is a three mana return any card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, for this one to be able to return any card from your hand, you're still having to pay three mana, but it scales. So that means it's amazing in Sealed, where it's just a slower format. You're able to put more mana into it. You're able to really build a board state where if it gets wrecked or if they destroy all of your stuff, or if you're able to kind of make an attack that looks a little silly, you're able to get this card back are you able to get any of those cards back, anything you've played back previously. Uh, this card is very, very powerful and sealed. It's not quite as good in draft because draft is a faster format than that. Um, I would not be surprised if this was a uh, if this was a ramp sideboard card, maybe ones or two ofs against a control deck where they want to refuel at the end of the game, but it's hard to argue that because Seasons Past exists. So maybe in a world where Seasons Past does not exist, this is an option. But until that goes away, more than likely, this won't see any play. But that's okay. In Sealed, it is an all-star. And you will love it in your decks because it is, it's doing what you want it to do. And in the late game, it's amazing. Excuse me. Wildy Bandar is next. Oh, baby. Wildy Bandar. One green for a 1-1 one, one common. Wait for it. Cat Monkey. Cat monkey, y'all! There's a cat monkey in Magic. Oh my god, there's a cat monkey. Can you believe that? Because for one green and two generic mana, you may give it indestructible until end of turn. So this one green, one one can get indestructible, but it's a cat monkey. It's bad. But it's a cat monkey. Remember that. And that's an awesome way to end our complete set review of the green Kaladesh cards. It's a cat monkey, y'all. You can't, you can't not love the cat monkey. So, I want to thank you guys for joining me so far on this trek through Kaladesh, our longest, most likely longest, trek has to come. We need to talk about all the artifacts in the artifact block. So that is going to be really interesting. I hope you guys come back here, join me. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. I want you to like this thing. Subscribe to my channel if you like this stuff and you want more of this type of content. Until next time, Magic players, this is Evan Irwin. Tapping the cards so you don't have to.